so no. Okay, day five out of seven. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the ten bodies really quickly. Uh, just because there's a lot of people who there. It's their first sort of experience with Kundalini Yoga. So um, we'll go into that. So I guess there's a little traffic today, so we'll let people get settled here, and then we'll tune in. But in the meantime, um, in the Kundalini Yoga system, uh, there's uh, what's called the Ten Bodies, and it's a it's a way of looking at your energy field as more than just the physical body. It's interesting because it's the when I came to Kundalini Yoga is the first time I ever considered any of these things. We're we're really not taught anything about the, our energy system, and uh, my wife's a big conspiracy theorist, and she'll give you all the reasons why we're not taught the very basics of how we work. Uh, but I'm a little more forgiving, so I'll just tell you how it works. There's ten, ten energy bodies, however you want to assimilate that. The first body is the soul body. So number one is the soul. And I'll add that in this ten body system, it is part of uh, what's called tantric numerology. So it's, uh, you have this uh, energetic system, right? It's an electromagnetic field made up of a lot of different moving parts, just like a car has a lot of different parts, but it can also be very simple. You sit, you get in a car, you open the door, you put the key in the ignition, you start the car, and you drive it. So you don't have to know how the whole car works, you can go to somebody. You, know, you only have to know a certain amount of things to operate the car. It's the same thing with this physical body, and that's why we, we rely on the intuition, because we, we have a gut instincts and how to move and that's what we're going to do today for the yoga is we're going to do we're going to work on the central vagus nerve which gives you your gut instincts more on that later but the 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 ten bodies uh, <coughs> are the soul body number one and again this is all uh, numerological because we're starting to realize that the entire universe is computerized so we have an electromagnetic field and that interfaces with the larger, wider electromagnetic field of the Earth and the universe. And within that, there, there's, it, it's a big mathematical sort of equation. So th these ten bodies help you to integrate <coughs> mathematically with the uh, larger body of the universe. So the first body is the soul body. Right? Number one is the soul. The second, third, and fourth are parts of the mind. Now this is where it gets key because we've been talking about the cycle of intellect, how a thousand thoughts drop into your mind every blink of the eyes and we go for one thought and then we have a feeling about it, it gets energized and then we take action. So in the ten bodies you have the negative mind, the positive mind, and the neutral mind. Two, three, and four. So the negative mind is first. So those thousand thoughts that drop into your mind every blink of the eyes, the, the, you catch that one thought, the first gear or first place that thought is filtered through is the negative mind. And that's by design to protect you. So you can assess the thought and go, is this a danger to me? And then if you have enough energy the way it's supposed to work, if you have enough pranic energy, that thought then filters through the positive mind, which gives you the benefits and the assets for you. And if all goes well there, then uh, you have enough energy, then that will go to the neutral mind, which is the meditative mind, which will allow you uh, to basically your, your whole uh, spirit to come behind the decision that you make, and then that uh, is backed and fueled by your whole energy system from the soul down. So negative mind, positive mind, neutral mind. So again we have the soul body is number one, second 
energy body is the negative mind, third, positive mind, fourth, neutral mind. Then we come to the fifth body is a physical body. Everybody knows that one. So it's like you can experience it. We, we've been experiencing it for how many ever years we've been on the planet. <coughs> it's the physical body. It needs no introduction. And then the sixth body is the arc body, which is the halo. Right? If you see pictures of saints, like pictures of Buddha, pictures of Jesus, they always have this big glow around the head, right? And that's because this is the, it's the heads-up display for the aura. So your entire electromagnetic field, it, it gets kind of sort of projected up here, around the top of the head. And it's, and it's also like an antenna that interfaces with the infinity and gives you, uh, it, it, gives, it, it gives you kind of the pull-down of thoughts, and the, the, what's a, there's a saying, it's, it's written on your forehead, that your destiny is written on your forehead. And that's because this, remember, we, we talked about the, the samskars, the waves of the mind, the thoughts that get pulled down. So you come into this life and there's n n no kundalini yoga practice, anything like that. You're just kind of going on the, what you've been given, which is you showed up based on your karma, you, you landed, you took a breath, at that point in time and space, latitude and longitude, that's, and, and that's all again mathematical, and your karma landed you there, your karma issued you your parents, and that whole setup, all completely on the network, given back to you. And so there you are with that. And if you haven't done, if you have no other means of changing this, which nobody pretty much did until Kundalini Yoga came along, then this, this arc line, arc body, it was kind of set with your karmic transmission. And that's what you would have. So it's all kind of written up here. Does that make sense? So your whole energy field has this kind of heads-up display called the, the arc line. Now, with Kun, the good thing about Kundalini Yoga is that with these different kriyas and, and like the meditation we're doing, sata, nama, rama, dasa, sase, soham, we rework the patterns in the brain at the primal level and then you can rewrite what's written here. That's another fancy way of saying you can cut the karma and then you can start to project and put energize the, those impulses from your spirit at where you want to go. So it's that car the subconscious thoughts and the karma and that kind of stuff is what keeps you from the flow of that soul. So you have that's why we go through this life. Sometimes we have aspirations and we have intentions, and they just why don't they happen? It's because between you and that thing is your subconscious mind, which is based on the karma and that kind of stuff. The good news is if you have a regular practice of this, you it doesn't have to be a big deal. Just a, you know, it could be a you know few minutes up to a half hour, if you're really hardcore, a couple of hours in the morning. And it's cumulative. It's like a bank account. It builds up. And, and little by little, you know, like water on a rock, it starts to wear away this, what's written here, and it kind of re, uh, rewrites the patterns. So that's the six bodies, the arc line. Clearly, I can't say enough about it. <laughs> uh, and then the seventh is the aura, the auric body. The aura is the circumvent force, it's the container, it's, this, it's, the, it's basically the sum total of all the chakras and everything, the, the auric field. <coughs> and then uh, the eighth body is the pranic body, and that's the, that's the, that's the body that stops, stop, uh, stores your life force energy. The subatomic pranic force is a sub subtle consciousness on the breath, <coughs> which also carries that guru force. There's, there's, a, there's this thing called the pavan guru. And the pavan is the vehicle that the guru travels on within the breath. These things kind of sound, you know, kind of highfalutin, but my experience of it is that you have this breath and there's a subtle component to it, the consciousness. And with that, within that consciousness is that enlightening force. It's got a whisper from eternity that gives you that uh, the, the, the guru, the darkness, um, being kind of uh, enlightened, right? So the, <coughs> the, uh, the, the, the maya, right? The, the, the projection of all this crap in the mind gets uh, kind of 
wiped away by this connection to the uh, to the guru, which happens on the breath and happens in several different ways. <coughs> so that's the, uh, the the pranic body, and uh, then the ninth body is the subtle body. And we talked about yesterday the the, 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 whole, all the teachings on death. The subtle body and the soul body travel together, and the subtle body is kind of like the ambassador for the soul body. <coughs> and one way it's described, you can look at it as uh, you know when you're when you're very subtle and refined. You're close to the soul. So we have somebody like a jazz musician or somebody who's uh, a musician or somebody who's really like uh, qualified and, and, and really into it and can play music or something like that really well. Or an artist who creates very subtly. It's those subtle energies that, that we say, oh, that, guy, that, that guy's got soul. He plays with soul or she paints with soul. There's a lot of soul in her painting. It's because the subtleties bring in the soul because they, they travel together. And then the tenth body uh, is the radiant body. And the radiant body is the, uh, it's kind of like, it's, it's your uh, connection to the internet, the network. Right, it, it, it's there's a, a teaching Yogi Bhajan gives where he says the he calls it the molecule psyche of the radiant body, <clears throat> and that's where everything's kind of connected. So if your radiant body is active, things will just come to you. They'll just come to you, and your your your, your radiance like a magnet will attract it. And as I say this, I can see and people are like how can that work. Because we're so used to going, we're so used to, we're taught to go out and you gotta work hard, you gotta hustle, and you gotta muscle, and you gotta fight because there's not enough. This is the overriding program in us. You know, we rarely even have the experience of uh, just being and then everything you need coming to you. There's a great teaching, you know, everybody repeats it over and over again, which I love. And it took a while to get in my brain, that's how pro anti programmed we are. But he, he says over and over, he says, he goes, for nine months you lived without air or anything like that. You had all everything you needed in the womb. Now you come out and you worry. So this is the mother, your mother didn't actually didn't plan anything. She, this nature did that. You were in the womb and, and, and the whole by design, you, you were given life and that life kind of grew and you were fed and everything you needed was there. And then you come out, but, and then we get into this world, and there's all kinds of these, it's basically software programs uploaded on the brain to say, you know, danger, fear, there's not enough, and all that kind of stuff. And what he's saying is um, that if you can get, if you can synchronize with that, with your true nature, then, then you're going to be taken care of all the time. And so that's the radiant body. So when you can get into the radiant body, there's another place where he says, the radiant body is the faith. Right? So we, we're used to having faith, if you're taught in religion, to have faith in something out there. But <clears throat> if you can, if, when you activate your radiant body, you just know because you're on the network and things sort of come to you. And you can live in that place. And that's, why, that's the whole design behind this practice is so that you can live in that place. Another good quote from Yogi Bhajan is, I don't believe in miracles, I rely on them. Because what he was trying to do, putting, he gave like 8,000 lectures and classes, etc., over a, a relatively short period, like 40 years, <clears throat> with the stuff that he downloaded, it's amazing. When you start to get into the teachings of what they do, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling what he was able to bring on to the planet. So that's, that's, those are the ten bodies, the radiant body. And then you go on the whole, there's a whole numerology on it. We do that in the teacher training where we go, we have to spend a whole day on the numerology. and. Um, the spiritual names come out of the numerology. So when your birthday, um, you land on the planet a certain uh, day, you take your first breath, that's kind of like flipping the switch on. You're the, it's, a, it's a grid, it's a tantric grid on this planet, so you have latitude and longitude. At that point in space and time, you take a breath, and then you're, 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 the whole thing's activated, and then at that point in time, your, your moment of birth, the planets are arranged in a circle, that's where the astrology comes from. And all these forces, Right? right, it's all again computerized and mathematical, and we can go into it. <coughs> Ten bodies, uh, tantric numerology is one way you can go into it. So I just wanted to give you, this is a lot of just information, but many people, this is their first experience with Kundalini Yoga, or even if you had a couple experiences with Kundalini Yoga, it just, you know, in a 90 minute class, you might just do the Kriyas and that kind of stuff. So we talk about the cycles of the mind, the, the, the cycle of the intellect, so the thousand thoughts drops into the 
mind. But I want to cover the ten bodies so you know now that negative mind, positive mind, neutral mind. And what does that mean to you? Well, if you're getting too negative, that you might be a little depressed, meaning you're, you don't have enough pranic energy. You're not breathing consciously enough. You're not moving your body enough. You're not exercising and sweating your body enough, so there's toxins in there pulling down on the whole system. And then the mind, because it's all interconnected, gets bogged down. And then you get stuck in the negative gear because the mind, the, 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 the thought comes in and then you attach to it. And when you attach to it, the subconscious memory banks spit up all kinds of stuff. That all goes through the negative mind. So what happens? You have a thought. You're, first of all, you're not, you don't have enough energy. So the thought comes in and you, um, and you, you energize that thought. And then the subconscious memories come in. And, what, and where do you get stuck? in the negative mind. You start remembering all the negative things about stuff. Unless you have the energy to switch gears into the positive mind. You go, oh, fuck it. I've done a lot. I, you know, shit's happened before and I got through it and I'll get through this too. You know, then the mind starts to kick and said, you know, just relax. You know, go get a coffee or something. Shut up. You know, it's just, it's happened before. I'll get through this. You know, you get, get to the positive mind. Clearly that's how my positive mind works. It's not, you know, all sunshiny. <laughs> Knock it off, you jerk. Um, <laughs> so that's these are the gears of the mind of how this stuff works. Uh, but what we're going to today is the, uh, the central vagus nerve. We're going to work the, the, the vagus nerve. And um, it's very interesting because there's always something to learn, especially in this practice. For years I've heard this, I've you know, done this set in classes and and heard about this vagus nerve, I never really knew what it did. It's right around the heart center here, kind of inside between the like larynx and the, the lungs. And there's a nerve there that connects the, the neurons in the gut to the neurons in the brain. And then in, in the gut, there's quite a number of neurons. And in fact, right here, the gut considered the second brain. The second brain contains some hundred million neurons, more than in either the spinal cord or the peripheral nervous system. There's many neurons in the gut as, as, as there are in the brain of a small animal, like a dog or a cat. So that's where the idea of gut instinct comes from, because you basically have a second brain here, because there's so many neurons here that it gives you, like, you said, do you think we, we, we fail to think of ourselves as a comprehensive energy field that's all interrelated because it's what's emphasizes is logic and thinking in school and all that kind of stuff and, and, and that's by design so that you become a good worker in society and it's not good or bad it's just where we're at but what we need to start learning is that you know intuition trumps all of that sorry I just pulled up another <laughs> I, just, I just gave an example of the negative mind uh, for some people uh, <laughs> so, anybody watched those uh, hearings yesterday on the Supreme Court? Well, we have some political people in our house, so they, they, they had CNN all, CNN all day. It's really fun, interesting service. So, uh, which is why you need gut instincts to know what somebody else's agenda is trying to take you, whether it's politics or something else, right? So, 100 million neurons in this area, and the central vagus nerve connects the two. So that so that, that the central vagus nerve is when it's firing, it gives you the connection between these the, the, the main command center of the brain and this gut in, this gut outpost command center. And with all of that, if all this stuff is all tuned up, the ten bodies and the eight chakras and then this nervous system and that kind of stuff, you have a clear connection to an infinite flow of data, information, and guidance. And the radiant body then helps you, when you send out the signal, it helps things kind of just compile and form and, and, and come to you, come to you naturally. And that's what it is. If you can just learn, if you can, if you can get this energy system working well and create the habit of, of, of intuition rather than thinking, Right? then you can, you can basically kind of be in a rhythm that you enjoy and then watch things kind of come in as you need them. 
And you have to apply pressure, just like sometimes you have to apply the brakes in your car and you have to turn to avoid crashing into something. Those maneuvers have to happen. But for the most part, if you're on the ball, as they say, <clears throat> then you'll be able to make those maneuvers. And most of it, most of the time you're driving around, it's smooth sailing. Right? But every once in a while, there's something that comes into the road or that kind of thing. And then, if you're, if you're prepared, if you're in good health and well-rested and all that kind of stuff, you don't, that's not a problem. Okay? So, uh, that is that. Well, there was a quote from Yogi Bhajan. I'm just going to give this last thing. It's a quote from Yogi Bhajan on the central vagus nerve. Uh, where does he say here? According to the ancient acknowledged belief and according to the medical science, the central vagus nerve is what carries the life. And that's why people in the old times investigated how to pro prolong the life, how to shorten the life, because it's not according to your breathing, according to your years or days. Life is according to the pranic breath, breath of life, they call it. Okay, let's do it.